What's up, Rockstars? New Zombicide coming your way really, really quick, plus some more cool IP games that I'm covering for the first time, and of course, some updates for you, including games that you'll see on this channel. Hopefully, we'll see. Thank you to my channel sponsor Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. All right, as an FYI, my dog wanted to be with me, Sawyer. You probably last saw him as a puppy. Uh, Sawyer, Sawyer, come here, come here, come here, come on up. Come here, come here, come here, come here. This is him now, so he's a little bit bigger, so if you hear him in the background, uh, breathing heavily, it's because he's always hot. All right, come on, lay down, good boy. So, that, sorry about that. Uh, hopefully, yeah, earlier he was like rolling in the carpet, like he was like, pulling himself he's weird anyway uh let's go ahead and start zombicide white death this is going to be the next zombicide the next come on kickstarter this is going to be coming very quickly this is their sequel another one to the medieval fantasy it's their bread and butter it's definitely their highest uh one i believe that they ever did and so this is now the second because they did green horde as well and so now they're doing of course white death now there is a little screenshot here that i can share that shows uh the actual zombies the walkers uh, as it were one thing well, a couple things to notice first of all more unique sculpts now when i say unique sculpts i mean it's mostly the same with a little bit of changes um and also flat bases they're rolling like it's a 2000 uh, and uh, 15 here, I guess. <laughs> so it's unfortunate that the Marvel Zombicide got sold to bases, but these are not. Um, kind of a bummer in my mind, but whatever. Uh, I guess they want to make them a little bit cheaper. That being said, it's nice to see the variety of sculpt already. That's kind of cool. I really dig that. It'll definitely help because you're going to have a lot of these. So FYI, that's kind of the look and feel of it by the looks of it. Um, definitely reminds me of like... Uh, Oh, I don't know, like, 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 a I kind of remember like Mulan, right? Because it's all like in the, in the, like the animated show, at least where like, you know, she's like up in the mountains and snowy everywhere and she's fighting these people. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Anyway, moving on from that, we got Celestial. Yeah, let's see it. Now, this is by Dimension Games. And if you didn't know, they do some other stuff. For instance, Twisted Fables, which is a fantastic game. They delivered that, plus the, like, redo of it. So they've delivered that twice. They've delivered Dawn, or not Dawn of Madness. They haven't. We'll talk about that. Deep Madness, they've delivered twice. They now have a third campaign that's outstanding for another expansion reprint that I don't believe has delivered yet. And then, of course, Dawn of Madness is delayed, though they're still working on it, apparently. There's still a lot of, um, uh, it's like this thing where they, like, do the story and then the gameplay and then the story has to match the gameplay and vice versa. So they're kind of doing it in tandem and it's just taking a very long time. When I saw it at Gen Con, it looked like it's going to play a lot better. So that's good from what I saw way back when. I think worthwhile in the long run, um, but... That being said, it's a very delayed game. It's kind of like Lazy Square Games and Storm Sunder, where no matter what Dimension Games do, if they launch anything before they deliver Dawn of the Madness, there's going to be people that are kind of frustrated about that. And rightfully so. It's definitely an issue when you see stuff like that. Um, if they hadn't been delivering the other stuff, then that would be uh, kind of one thing, though they have been delivering all of their other stuff. It's just Dawn of Madness is still kind of in development. They definitely... Um, took a lot of the feedback they got from the prototype, like when I reviewed it and stuff like that, to heart. And definitely you kind of reworked it. So it's one of those things where it was put onto Kickstarter thinking they were probably farther along than they were. And then they had to kind of go back to the drawing board. I think in the end, again, it'll be a good thing. But until then, uh, it's going to be a little rough. So I'm a little conflicted about it because I can understand wanting to deliver it. But I also know that they have delivered everything else that they've been doing pretty consistently and that I understand the situation of Dawn of Madness because of how bad it was before when I played it. It was almost unplayable. Whereas now, again, what I saw at Gen Con, it looks actually fairly robust, which is which is good to see. And I think people are going to be happy with it. But 
Yeah, so it, you're gonna have to judge how you feel about that. I'm, a, I guess, a little indifferent. If they hadn't delivered their other stuff, it'd be one thing, but they did deliver Twisted Fables and they did deliver Deep Madness, and so I'm a little bit more okay with it. That being said, we don't know when this is gonna launch, but I'm gonna take a quick look here, and this is a preview. They're gonna be showing more, and I have a very big preview of this uh, at Gen Con. I actually showed it. I showed it on a game map, actually, so you can see what the game looks like, uh, and I talk through it and actually do an interview on it. So I wanna link down in the description below on that. Uh, right, I'll timestamp right to the interview uh, where I actually talk about Celestial. But let's go ahead and take a look at what they have here. So if you didn't know, this is a, 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 a big epic game. It has the epic mode and the challenge mode and skirmish mode. This is a skirmish game they can play solo, cooperative, or competitively. It has a very rich story. I've read a lot of the story and guys, it is crazy. It's essentially Chinese mythos meets Game of Thrones. So there's a lot of political intrigue and backstabbing and um, religious stuff and all this stuff kind of going together in this crazy sci-fi world that is is just nothing, you've never seen anything like it before. It's super duper cool here. They're saying 60 to 90 minutes. I would almost assume that's per player. Otherwise that plays really quick and maybe it does. There are skirmish games that can play really quick. Um, if that's the case, you might be spending just as much time setting it up as anything else. So, you know, I, I, I don't know, it'd be kind of interesting to see that. So right now they're showing the concept art. However, I have shown this mini before uh, from a live stream. If I can find that video, I'll post it. If you know what that video is, please let me know. That might help me find it a little bit easier and I'll uh, pin that comment or, or uh, put in the description or otherwise share it. Uh, but this mini is like this. It's a huge mini. Okay, this is not a game that you're gonna be putting back in the box. It's gonna live on your shelf like uh, like a Kingdom Death Monster kind of does typically for a lot of people. But there are a lot of factions. This like crazy like tree lady thing is like really, really crazy. Now some of these we haven't seen before and I've seen some that they're not showing like 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 a Nuwa, Nuva, Nuwa, whatever her name is, the uh, mermaid lady with the DNA thing. She's like a, a speaker of like their God that then says things that they don't like politically and then she's a rebel because they kick her out and she's on the run but she has all these followers and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot, there's a lot. Um, I, we've also not seen these before, but if that becomes a mini, I'm going to be excited. That looks freaking awesome. Uh, Zurong, I actually have a painting of her coming up soon, so you can take a look at that. I know it is late. It takes a lot to edit those. I just haven't done it with the move and everything. But as you can see, a lot here. Now, I am excited for them to actually show a lot of the minis, because I know they do have a lot of these minis. Uh, but, and they yeah, ask like this thing, like what is going on here? This is some crazy stuff is what this is. So this guy looks freaking sweet too. I really dig him. Um, so it's, it's very much an RTS. And what I mean by that is you have like your hero characters and then you have essentially like these like factories or buildings that can produce units that are like these, uh, you know, regular units. It's like a war, it's like Warcraft like Warcraft 1, 2, and 3, where you have like these heroes that are walking around and then all the regular troops and then your buildings that you can even upgrade. Like for instance, they have one that produces these little drones, but if you, if you upgrade it, you can start moving it around as well. So there's a lot of really cool stuff like that that I'm super excited about. It definitely looks unique. And uh, yeah, I'll be covering more as I can. I'm gonna have another video showing off some of these minis. I just have to find them from the move so I can finish building them. Next up, we have a loading screen. My goodness, Singularity. .exe. This is by Octothorpe, which I had to look up. That's another name for the hashtag symbol or the pound symbol, depending on your age. Uh, so I didn't know that. Or or the Octothorpe symbol, if you're a weirdo. <laughs> uh, this is actually kind of cool. So I've already followed it myself. And in fact, I even con I did the whole contact thing to see if I can do a review for you guys. This looks neat. I dig this. So it's a card game. You get five bucks off if you sign up for it. The art style looks super cool. I really did that. Like, look at this chick. Like she looks awesome. I love the crazy hair and the and the crazy pants and the crazy colors and headgear and all just everything about that looks cool. But what this is is a card game with no randomness. That's right, you don't shuffle. You pick exactly the order that you're going to get things in. You can craft your combo deck the way you want to. The problem, and it says right here, your opponent is your enemy, not your deck. The issue is, of course, your opponent is trying to mess with that, right? Just like you're trying to mess with theirs. And so you're, you're kind of balancing, you know, uh, building the deck that you want to build for a combo and resisting other things or having backup plans or adjusting or whatever it might be. So that sounds super duper cool. I dig that a lot. I think it looks neat. I It's something, these kind of card games, I can get to the table really easily. And my whole family loves these card games. So uh, definitely, definitely interested in this one. And the art, 
edge to edge. Looks pretty. I dig it. So yeah, this will be linked down below. Feel free to follow it. Um, I know I did. That way I'll save five bucks and hopefully I can let you know how this is before it launches. I guess we'll see. All right, next up, we got Battletech Mercenaries. This is coming out in 16 days, guys. Very, very soon. Uh, this is the backer kit preview, so you get to see a lot. These minis, guys, they're, they're like this big. They're small, okay? At least these are. We'll, we'll look at some others, but look at that. It's all about the miniatures. This is how you play the game, and I might be a little... I mean, I can't remember exactly. They're, they're decently sized, uh, but they're not like huge or anything either. But you're going to get a lot. And as you can see, it is a hefty, hefty game. This is a game that, that could take over your life kind of thing. So they're doing their whole, uh, you know, like uh, packages like this that they did in the last one. So that's kind of cool to see because I know that was really popular. And they are doing some uh, large four-inch versions of them too, which will be super cool. And you can see the detail level there, which is also neat. They also have a whole bunch of shirts and all sorts of other stuff. Guys, there's a ton here. For you, I'm gonna go and link to this. I'm not gonna go over all of this. It's a lot of info. You guys can read up on it and see. We look at that painting one. That looks great. Um, but yeah, definitely cool one. I know there's a lot of people excited for it. Sixteen thousand two hundred and seventy other people to be exact. So uh, join the revolution, the BattleTech revolution, I guess. Okay, next up we got Seismic. I wanted to bring attention to this again. It looks like a fairly indie game to me, but. They have 1,623 followers, which I thought was pretty impressive. Um, I showed this off in more detail before, but essentially you're like essentially building this. You're trying to build this piece by piece while having units on the board and gathering different things and doing all that. It sounds pretty cool. All right, next up we have the cancellations. Back O Beyond Tales of Blood and Salt was canceled. Very unfortunate. Uh, 365 backers, they had a backer per day for the whole year apparently. Um, the project we love still didn't work out. This is, again, the game that was from the designers of Darkest Dungeon, the board game. But then they went and did this uh, kind of Euro pirate game. And I think uh, for a lot of people, they just failed to see the uniqueness that it brought, if it brought any. That was kind of, I think, a, a miss on their part that they could show a little bit better. But anyway, they had two updates and it's, hey, guess what? We're, we're going to be coming back. So until next time, we'll see. We'll see how long it takes. We'll see what they need to do. What they said, by the way, is that the $36,000 goal was legit. They would be able to produce it for the minimum order at that. But they were also starting their company and they wanted to essentially make enough profit to kind of continue as a company in a healthy way. Makes total sense. Uh, you don't, if, if you find somebody that's scooting by by the skin of their teeth, that's, that's kind of dangerous at this point in the game. So I'm glad they did that. We also have Street Fighter V Champion Edition, eighty-four thousand, which is I'm I'm it's it's impressive it's gotten that high. That being said, I expected a lot higher as well. And again, I wonder if this blacklist games being there kind of grosses people out, even though they're not really involved in it anymore. I do think, like I said last time, that they came to the uh, actual Kickstarter a little too early because all they have they don't have the renders here. They just have like silhouettes, which is just. So it's not as in visually interesting or exciting to see, hey, you're going to be getting someone that you'll be able to see at a later date, if that makes sense. Because otherwise, it seems pretty straightforward. It's actually pretty cheap, so that's cool. The minis are look to be a little on the small side. And again, they do have the flat bases, which is kind of a bummer. But uh, overall, it looks pretty darn decent. Uh, and it, so again, all these miniatures, you don't get to see any of them. I mean, that's really unfortunate. That's it, I think they came too early for that, right? See, th same thing here. Like, you want to be able to see the minis here. Imagine how what this would do if you were able to see the renders. I think that's bare minimum. That's what you got to do. Like, if you're going to offer miniatures, you got to show them. It's just at this point in time, that's that's kind of what you got to do. They did change to daily unlocks. So you can see that they have the actual dates here um, as opposed to monetary because they weren't really gaining a lot. So that's what they're doing right now. We'll see. It has seven days left. We'll see. Only 639 backers. Like, maybe they'll cancel. Maybe they won't. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you guys let me know what you think the future of this game is. All right, speaking of Blacklist Games, they have an update over on Facebook uh, about some red wax samples that they got for their fantasy series. Uh, they are up to 78, and they do have a Dropbox. I'm not going to link to that right now. I'll link to this, and you guys can look it up. Um, and they did post pictures of them all, too. You can kind of see a little bit of them there. Um, it's fairly straightforward, and honestly, they do some really cool stuff about this. So if you go down here, what is Red Wax? This whole thing here, this whole, this whole thing here is really just an update to tell you, hey, this is how miniature making goes. It's well worth a read. You guys should definitely do that. 
Um, it talks about some practical things like a goblin needing five copies, but then being paired with another mini that you don't need five copies of, but you have to print them all at once. And so you end up printing more or you waste one by just having that. So it, it, there, there's a lot of like interesting tidbits in there that you don't hear a lot of. I hear them when I talk to devs a lot, they'll bring it up, which is kind of cool, but they don't always talk about this very publicly. So that was, I think, kind of neat to see them talk about that. Next up, we have the Enchanted Table, another game table, guys, another one. This one seems kind of interesting. So it reminds me of the Alpha game table that I have, that I did my unboxings for for a long time on that black table that fold out. Um, one of the nice things, if you live in a small apartment or you don't have a dedicated game room like I did where I just gamed in my office, this kind of thing was super helpful. I wonder if they have a picture of it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to actually... Um, show the video but yeah so it, it folds up i don't think they're going to show it yeah right into this this is it, it folds up and then it takes out and there's a little compartment where you can have all the different accessories and whatnot obviously they're gonna put every accessory you want on there you can adjust the height of the table that's kind of neat too it's about as wide as my table there not as long uh but 37 inches wide which i, I wish it was a little bit wider but for a fold out table that's not too bad so it, I imagine it's heavy. They show two people lifting it. That's what I would suggest too. If you, if you think you're gonna lug this out on your own, you're probably wrong, uh, or you're a lot more of a beefcake than I am. <laughs> so anyway, it will be interesting, and I, you know, we'll see what the the price is, of course, and everything. And and I don't know exactly. You know, anytime you see this kind of stuff, I do worry about putting pressure on that and bending that rail system, right? Like, how, how much can you lean against this? Can you even like lean over it and we'll, or that press it down? Always my concern with these um, unless it looks really really robust this looks like it's a metal track kind of put onto some wood which makes me think no it could not support a lot of weight but maybe it could maybe I'm wrong I guess we will see uh, let me know if you have experience with it if you've seen it if you experience things like this whether that's a, a real uh, fault of these kind of tables or am I just thinking up a problem that doesn't exist but that's my worry anyway Next up, Encounters Shattered Away. 17 days ago, almost 40,000 rays, so they're going to be unlocking some more stuff. Again, I, right now I'm at the 55. I might upgrade to the 120. Um, the acrylic standees would be nice. The foil cards would be awesome. And again, I think my kids would really enjoy playing this with me. And if that's the case, I want it to be a good experience. So, you know, the neoprene mat would be nice too. Like, I don't care about the box, really. The nice, the dice are nice. I hate that it comes with plain. I hate this. I hate plain dice in a Kickstarter game at all. If you're doing a special print, you may as well put some special dice in there, man. I'm, if you can print this with art, you can print this that make it look kind of nice, as opposed to some Yahtzee dice. Um, I just it, it just feels cheap to me uh, and looks cheap. But this game looks like a lot of fun. So again, I have back to that. Next up, we have the Black Keep Hell's, it's gonna put me right down there, Hell's Gate, which According to you guys, I did ask for feedback and you guys said, yes, you would like to see this on the channel. It's not every day that you get something as indie as this. And so this is where the Patreon money, money is going. It's going to stuff like this. It's going to stuff like Encounters this month. So uh, thank you, of course, to my patrons and everybody that supports this channel. Um, I've, I'm have i using upgraded lights right now. That's already from the fundraiser. I'm starting to set up uh, some other filming stuff. You probably can't see it. Maybe you can. I don't know. But there's I'm, I'm ceiling mounting things above my... It, it, we're, Working on it, working on it. It's gonna be nice, it's gonna be nice. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for helping me do this channel as much as I possibly can. Either way, 24 days to go. That being said, guys, when I covered this, I think there were like 14 backers. Now, I haven't checked my bit.ly. I don't know how many of you actually went and checked this out based off my coverage, but either way, I'm happy to bring to light and give the time on a video to an indie thing like this. I think this is super cool. If you are not aware, uh, James Franz in here does these kind of really indie uh, kind of passion project board games. And I think it's really cool. I want to use it, if nothing else, to show that for a few thousand dollars, you can deliver a game. They're using SEOcast for these minis, and it looks great. I think that's towards the bottom. Uh, no, it's one of the updates. I'll show you. Uh, casted miniatures there. That's the quality of it. It is a hard plastic. I showed you a miniature from CO casting that hard plastic uh, from Gen Con in my Gen Con haul video. So you guys could see it there, but it's going to look great. It really is. And I think that's awesome. I guess I, what I wanted to say is so many people, so many companies want to go either big or bust. If it's not mass market, mass produced in China, they don't want to make the board game at all. 
And I think that's unfortunate. There's a lot of ways to make things at a smaller scale that is still sustainable, that's still viable, and you can still make a profit on it. It's just not, you're just not printing, you know, 40,000 copies of your board game. But if, if only 20,000 people want it or 10,000 people or whatever, if only 50 people want it, you can technically still do it. It's technically impossible. Now, as a business, you start, start to wonder, you know, okay, what's worth it, what's not? Maybe for a lot, 50 isn't. But I don't think the answer is always mass produced in China like it's some huge thing. It doesn't always have to be that way. It doesn't always have to ha incur that hefty price, both in shipping and in manufacturing costs. There are cheaper ways to make board games that are completely viable for a smaller subset. So if you want to have a cheap, like, you know, oh, hey, we'll fund in $10,000. You could. You just need a plan in place to, if we only make 10,000, we'll make it this way. If it's 20,000, we'll make it this way. If we get 20,000 backers, yeah, we'll go to China. But until then, we're going to do it this way. You can do that as a company, and I think it's a very smart thing that more people need to do. Moving on from that. Oh, I do want to show that at 10,000, uh, and, and again, it's one of these indie things. So if you, it's even hard to find the stretch goals. But if you go here, you'll see stretch goals. For every 10,000 increments, they're going to add minis from them, their fantasy line. So like these or like some of these. Look at this guy here. He looks freaking sweet. Or these guys. Or I'm sorry about the page load every time. That's annoying. Or these guys. Or these guys. I mean, there's a lot uh, that they could add here. These people look freaking sweet. Look at that guy. I really dig that. Um... But I even made a comment like, hey, you should show like a picture. Hey, well, I'll leave this at 10,000. And then he was like, yeah, once we hit 10,000, I'll show pictures of it. It's like, well, I mean, you do it ahead of time so people are can anticipate it and know what's coming up and be excited about it. So it's it's just kind of funny to to see the, the endiness there when it comes to, I guess, business practices and whatnot. Hopefully things improve. But either way, very, very happy uh, to see them succeed. And I think that's just a lot of fun, if nothing else. So I will be backing this as well. You'll be able to see... Uh, unboxing of a game that only right now 50 people are getting, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Guys, that's all I had for today, though. Hope you enjoyed the news video. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, any feedback on some of the questions I had throughout this video, do let me know. You guys are geniuses. Share your knowledge with the rest of us, please. With that out of the way, I'll talk to you guys again very, very soon. I have a, another Kickstarter board game that arrived. I need to unbox for you guys, plus additional reviews. So stay tuned for that. Take care. Bye, guys. <laughs>